Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com, joined by Nate Atkins. Uh, another week of uh, the DeAndre Levy watch, Nate. Um, he is practicing, uh, but whether he plays remains a mystery. I'm, I'm, I've talked to some people close to the situation. They've said uh, that not to see Levy this week, that he's very close, but has hurdles left to, to clear. He has not cleared them. He has not been cleared medically to play in this game, but he's very close. Um, the question, Nate, is how much does this team need him at this point? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, they come into this game against the New Orleans Saints, five straight games they've held opponents to 20 points or fewer. And so you like to say they're playing really, really well right now, and, and you think they can get by. They've won six of seven games. At the same time, this is where the schedule gets a lot tougher. I mean, they're going to go at New Orleans, which is as difficult as it gets, and they've got Dallas coming up on the road. They've got, you know, the Giants can can give you problems with Odell Beckham Jr. and everything they can do. And so you want to have a full deck there. And they, they feel like they're getting close on defense. But at the same time, you, you get this the sense that Levy's not going to play on Sunday, and he hasn't been. But to hear Whitehead today looked very limited. That all of a sudden you start to look at a, a position group of the Lions that was already a little shaky, a linebacker. They, they feel like they could use a little boost there. So I... Right now, it's it's tempting to say that they could get by without him, but I think as we see tougher teams on the schedule with more physical running backs like they're about to see, I think they're going to want their full deck. Well, I totally agree, um, especially with a player of, of Levy's caliber. I mean, he's a really good player, and he covers so much. I think what separates him from a lot of linebackers is that some linebackers are good in the box, some are good in pass coverage. Levy is that rare breed who can make plays in, inside the box, and he offers covers. He covers the pass exceptionally well and that's something the Lions have lacked at points this year particularly early they really struggled early in the season they cycled through a, a number of weak side linebackers trying to find a combination that could defend the tight end defend the, the running back leading out leaking out of the backfield mm -hmm. and they really struggled and they've addressed some of those concerns in recent weeks I give Terrell Austin a lot of credit for going to some three safety formations occasionally four safety formations something that um, he, we have not seen previously from him this is not something he wants to do ne necessarily but he's, he's done it to help shore up some of these weaknesses in pass coverage. It has helped against the Jacksonvilles and the Minnesotas of the world. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, New Orleans is not these teams are much better on offense. They can, they can beat you in so many ways. Drew Brees is, is like Matthew Stafford, but better. He, he, he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's having the second most productive season of his career. He's extremely accurate. He's spraying it to all these targets. I mean, they just hung 49 points on the Rams, and Brennan Cook's got zero targets in that game. And this is a great defense. So, of course, you need a guy like, like Levy, I think, and you have some tough games after that. You need a guy like this, I think, to help, uh, to help account for some of these issues, or you're going to get beat eventually. Yeah, and especially one thing to consider, I'm glad you brought it up, is how he covers running backs, because <clears throat> I think they've gotten okay over the past couple of weeks facing Minnesota. It doesn't do a lot of that. But you saw against Jacksonville, they really lost Chris Ivory a number of times. They've given up checkdowns, and they've been able to tackle in space in the passing game, and it's gotten them off the field. But when you face guys like Mark Ingram that are, back, that are dipping out and, and uh, Ezekiel Elliott that's going to be on that, that level, you, you want a guy you can trust out there. And, and they task Whitehead with a lot of those coverage assignments now that Lovey's not in there. And if he's you know banged up with the knee or potentially not even going to play if we get to that point, you start to wonder if that's going to be a part of the defensive game plan for teams. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think they need Levy, not just from a talent standpoint, but like you said, a versatility standpoint, something, someone they can put at the center of the scheme and kind of build around him. I think that's yeah. what bringing Slay back and getting Ansa back to speed. When you get your best players like that, that really helps a defensive coordinator. I, I agree. And one of the points I want to make on Levy is, uh, of course, of course, that you, I think, you know, Bind is fine and everything out there, mm -hmm. but Levy's a better player, so you do lose that. But it's also, you know, he, he's one of these kinds of guys, I think, who makes guys better around him. And I don't right. think, I don't think it's a, a big mystery or a, or a coincidence that you lose a guy like Levy and suddenly a guy like Tahir Whitehead, who's had some really good games for the Lions and has looked very good at times in previous years, and they signed him to that $8 million deal, the two-year $8 million deal in the offseason. Mm -hmm. It's maybe not a coincidence that Whitehead suddenly doesn't look that good in pass coverage because right. he doesn't have a guy like Levy who just in, has incredible coverage skills. He has great instincts, which is something that Caldwell talks about. Helps him cover a tremendous amount of territory. You lose a guy like that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to expose weaknesses elsewhere, and I think it has exposed some weaknesses into here Whitehead's game. He's got over 100 tackles, which is nice, but that's mm -hmm. a very misleading statistic. He has not always been great in pass coverage. I think losing a guy like like Levy, who can make guys better around him, cover more territory, uh, has been to the detriment of some of those players around him. Mm -hmm. And even a guy who's, who's gotten to play in the playoffs like he has, there's not a lot of that. Guys who've done it here in Detroit, that would help. Even think about the more and more they use Miles Killebrew 
as sort of a safety linebacker hybrid. I mean, that would even help a player like that to have a guy like Levy. So there's a lot of little dimensions to Levy's game I think they need more than any one specific area because they're playing pretty well in a lot of areas, but yeah. they could use another another sort of cornerstone player like that. I do not expect to see, as I said, I'm just based on my reporting, I do not expect to see Levy on the field Sunday, so I think you'd see a lot more of Miles Kilbrew uh, in those three mm-hmm. safety sets for at least another week. But he is getting close, rest assured. I know there's a lot of fan anxiety when it comes to Levy. He's, he, listen to me, he's, he bit. wants to play, he's, he's working hard. Um, you know, he's not mailing in, he's not cashing checks. Uh, he's, he's very close. There's a, uh, you know, a hurdle left with the knee to clear. He's very close. He'll be out there this year. I, I, I'm very, I'm, I'm sure of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Nate, I'm Kyle. We're on life. Keep it right here.